so much banging today. Good morning, beautiful souls. How are you all? I hope you're well. Ah, today, it's all about the beans. So, uh, I've got other things to plant. Plants to plant, squash. That's gonna be so annoying, is it? Tomatoes. The reason I'm getting on with the beans though is because so many have been nibbled, I'm gonna to have to direct sow. And in order to direct sow, I need these beds to be bashed down a bit. So, this bed I rough dog. <laughs> I rough dog it back in the middle of May. In the intervening time, it has set to concrete. So, they're not huge, but lumps like this, I can't sew into that. So what I found over the years with my soul, the best way to tackle beds when, after they've been rough dog and it's really dry is to soak them. So this has had two, so I soaked this bed, the bed over there that's also rough dog, soak that. Come back over here, soak this again. That initial soaking helps to just I don't know, like open up the soil, accept the water. Soak this again, soak that one again. I've also scattered chicken manure, manure pellets. And now, just with the fork, with a sort of, it's like bashing and flicking motion, just break it up a bit. I'll tell you what though, <laughs> it's hot already. Um, so, yeah, it's going to take me a while. My soil is so hard when it's dry, you're never quite sure whether you've picked up a lump of soil or a rock. That's a rock. So yeah, I'll get this bashed down um, and then I'll rake it over just to get it a bit level. Do the same with the other bed and then and it's going to be so weird for me to do it. Put the bean poles up the old fashioned way in this bed, as opposed to on the edge of the path. And I was trying to remember the last time I put bean poles up in this way, in the bed, the old school way. It was actually 2017. It was April, I believe. <laughs> God, I'm really late. Um, and it was one of the first videos I made when I started my channel. So, and it was in this bed. That's weird, isn't it? It's sort of like, look, I'm coming full circle. I quite, I quite like the sort of the serendipity of that. And just to say, um, it won't be by the time you see this, but happy summer, so, summer solstice. It's the solstice today which I sort of love, but it also makes me sad. I love it because, you know, it's sort of like, really, this is, summer is beginning. Yay! But it's also, I always have that little moment of, hmm, because from tomorrow, the days are going to be getting shorter again. <laughs> it's like, the days are going to be getting shorter before I've even planted my garden this year. But plant it, I jolly well will. Right, let me get on with this because it's quite a puffy, huffy job. And then we'll get those bean poles up. Woohoo! <laughs> Oof, scorching already. Okay, so a momentary reprieve in the shade of this shed. How well I get my breath back. I will shortly be using my cool bandana, however you call it. Inside there are little pockets sewn in. Inside there is kind of like um, an expandy gel thing. So what I'll do is I'll put that in some cold water. Oh, the dip tanks are all quite warm. <laughs> I'll water something so the dip tank empties and when the new water comes in, I'll put it into my watering can. It'll be cold from the mains. Put this in for 15 to 20 minutes and then whack it on. So yes, obviously plenty of water today. Plenty of shade breaks. My cool neck thing. A hat when I'm out there and I'm not talking to you. I usually, I all, well, I all, almost, almost always take my hat off when 
I'm talking on camera just because our faces, our eyes are what communicate and with the hat on you wouldn't see that. So, um, Churchill Black, Gigantes, I'm just gathering all my beans for sowing today. The, the irony is the shed is a bit Marie Celeste, um, I think that's Madeira Maroon, yeah. It kind of looks like I left it three weeks ago when I did all of this sewing. I've got my Coco de Pampol, Coco Sophie. Where are my Coco Sophie? Just, yay. What's that? Runners. The run it. See, what I'm thinking is, even the ones that came up, so there's Runners, Madeira Maroon, and the Helder and some Borlotti. When I plant them, I'm also gonna pop in a couple of seeds as well, because I've got a feeling that the minute I plant these little plants out, they're gonna be gobbled. I don't wanna be pessimistic, but don't need chickpeas. I, literally, this, the whole shed looks like it looked, when was I last? It's like three and a half weeks ago. Um, yeah, I don't wanna be pessimistic about things, um, but um, I think we, you know, we had a mild winter. We had a really mild winter, so I think it's just allowed the slugs and snails to proliferate. So that's one thing. Also, you see, ah, strimmer battery. One of you uh, with a funny username. I can't remember. It's like Bull Bullstay, Bullasty, or Blue Stay, or something was saying that one of the beds I want to put the beans in, isn't that the one that's right next to my neighbour who's got the slug and snail hatchery? Yeah, it is. But it's the only place I've got. And it's this thing of every year, all the beds down that side get massacred because the slugs and snails proliferate on my neighbour's plot because it's an overgrown mess. So one of the things I'm gonna do today is strim right to his fence, get it all, you know, try and strim as much of that long grass down how much difference it'll make, I don't know, because as soon as you get to the other side of the fence, it is, it's cool, it's shady, it's lush, because it's just all overgrown. I honestly, I don't know how he's not been kicked off this site, but never mind. That won't be my business next year, will it? So, also, what do I need? I've got my row markers. I may not, I may not use my row markers again. This is where I'm going to seed, reseed the did I get rock and core yet? Rock and core and Coco de Pampol. I might just scrape out a drill with my knife. Ah, but before that, I need another basket with scissors and string. Oh my goodness. Do you know what? This is, it's so funny. I'm kind of excited about putting the bean poles up this week. I haven't done it for years. Oh, 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 and, and, Last minute substitution. I wonder where I'll put them. Um, my lovely friend Catherine, oh bless her, just tell you very quickly, it might be one of those today. Um, she texted me last night to say, was I ready for some spares? And I said, yes, please. So she's given me, I think, a spare courgette. I've forgotten her. And then a couple of spare, I think purple sprouting broccoli and a couple of spare Cavonanero. So she texted last night to say, when are you around? And I told her my times and days this week. She said, okay, well, if I miss you, I'll pop them in your cold frame. And I did think, mm, not much space. So I had a lovely text first thing this morning. She came on her way to work to say, I've just about squeezed them into your cold frame. So I've got a handful of little things from her. Oh, and on my way down here, I bumped into Gary, who's on his way out. He might come down to the plot later, but he's got spare Brussels sprouts. I said, no, thank you. I can't grow them for love and money. But he's also got spare Cavallo and kale, some spare kale. Did he say he's got spare red cabbage? Anyway, whatever he's got going spare. People are down to, most people have got rid of their spares already. Some folk have got one or two of something left. Everybody knows what a rough year I've had, <laughs> right from the get-go, right from January. So people have been offering me bits and bobs of spares, which is so beautiful. 
don't start me, I will cry. Anyway, back to Catherine. Um, she was talking about, gosh, this must, must, be a, must be a month or so ago. And now saying, I haven't even started my beans yet. And she said, oh, I'm just getting mine in today. I said, oh, what are you growing? And she rattled through her list. And then at the very end said, oh, and this one. And I said, oh, I've got to try that. If you've got any spare seed, please may I try it. And if you don't have any spare seed, because you're sowing it all, because you've just got a handful, it's from the Heritage Seed Library. So I said, if, if you don't have any spare seed, but you grow your own, you know, obviously she's growing her plants, there'll be seed to save from it. Could I have some seed for next year, please? You see, I'm determined to do some growing next year. Anyway, the reason I want them is because they are called District Nurse. How perfect. District Nurse. Yes, yeah, so originally from the Heritage Seed Library and they're a climbing French bean. She did tell me four or so weeks ago about, you know, what colour they are, what have you, what have you. I've forgotten everything, but definitely going to pop a few of those in as well so they can go in the seed basket. Right, I've also treated myself today. This is very naughty, but a nice ice cold, ice cold, what was the advert? I can't remember, but an ice cold Coke. Oh yeah, some days, some days that's what hits the spot. Okay, so... Let's have a water top up and then let's go and get going with some, um, what are they called? Poles. Just spacing.
that first row that's in, I didn't push them all the way down to begin with, just so I can sort out my spacing. It's been such a long time since I did it this way. Usually with spacing, um, I, get it, I kind of get it right first time because re repetition and that visual of seeing spacing, but it's been so long. Anyway, so that row lightly put in, okay, spacing was wrong, jig it down a bit, and now they're really solidly in the ground. This row, again, I'm just placing them in. It's easier now because on the opposite side, they're guiding me. But I'll come back along and shove them all in really quite firmly. Now, what I've just thought about is poles and possible lack of, because these will also, they'll need poles in the top to hold the top and they'll need some cross bracing. So I'm thinking, oh, I know. I'll use the poles from the cute frame because I'm not building the cute frame this year. However, I think pretty much all of those were, were just brittle and done in at the end of last year. So, I mean, I have so many poles, but even so, I think I'm going to be short. Right, so now, um, I'll get on with the rest of this without keeping you here, but in terms of spacing, we're about... <sighs> 20 centimetres apart between the poles. Oh my goodness. Poles do get brittle after a while. Actually, when you're putting your poles in, I know... <laughs> You've probably all done this already, but for next year, when you're putting your poles in, um, do, as you're pushing down quite hard, slightly brace it and keep your face away so that if it snaps and you suddenly go forward, you keep your body out of the way because you don't want a splintery piece to go into your cheek. You don't want it to go through your shoulder. Just be careful with old poles. Um, yeah, so spacing-wise, about 20 centimeters between be, between them within the row and there's about 35 centimeters between the two rows it's tight but it'll be okay and then I'll do two I'll aim for two plants per pole so this one bed will give me 48 climbing beans that bed 48 climbing beans in total 96 <laughs> so I've found over the years that a combination of the 96 climbers and, well, if all the rock and core and the cocoa de pan pole come up, that's about another 120, 150. But of course I had about 80 broad beans as well. So what's that, about 230, 330? It's over 300 bean plants I grow each year and that I find is I'm self-sufficient in beans for a year with 330 plants so if you're a family of four <laughs> I'll let you do the maths with the rest of this funnily enough I've just had one of my neighbours walk past she left the plot ages ago but she's come back she remembers she's left her secretaires out but she was astonished as she walked past she said are those poles actually going into the ground that's how uh, concrete the ground is right I'll get on and then we can uh, we can actually start some actually this I'm not planting here this is for Gigantes and Coco Sophie I want to keep them a bit further away from this slug hatchery next door and these are my really 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 precious ones mm, I might do some black church here as well but yeah um, get the structures built I'll seed this bed I'll seed this bed seed that bed and then we can go over that and actually do some planting It'd be nice to see some green in my garden finally <sighs> better late than never eh <laughs> never mind Oh, 
like it's hot. So these are some of the survivors. Um, oh, which bed? Which bed? Which bed? Which? Some of them are for here, and some are for the other bed. So I guess we'll just pop them down for now and get organised, and we can start planting. Goodness me, Scorpio. hot it's gorgeous i am not complaining it is really beautiful um but it's definitely the kind of weather for just oh what would i normally be doing in a normal year if i was on track with the garden this would be the stage of the year when my lovely days in the garden yes there's watering which is quite hard work it is really hard work watering this garden for anyone who's new to the channel, because you haven't seen me doing any watering this year yet, um, it's all done by hand with cans. There are dotted around the, the site, there are dip tanks. So we dip our can in, dip a can in, lug them back to the garden, dump them on the plants, go back, do it again, and repeat. Well, each bed, so I've got these four beds, within which there are the five mini beds. Each of my mini beds takes about four cans of water, which is two trips to the dip tank, two trips per bed, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten. So 40 trips to do the garden, and then another four or five trips to do the deck, cold frame, anything that's there. So yeah, it's quite an effort, but yeah, back to that thing of what would I normally be doing? It's tinker time. It's things like the tying in of my tomatoes. Mmm, the smell. Love it. Can't wait for that. Uh, so, yeah. I love the weather. It's beautiful, but it's not... <laughs> it's not been ideal for being out in it all day. But you know what? That's the way it is this year. So, this is the bird nearest oh, my neighbour's slug hatchery. What I'm gonna do is my least valuable beans on the front is my runner beans. And, oh, that's, it's, it's nice to be sitting on my bottom. I think the thing with today is not just the heat, but so far, everything I've done, I've been upright and on my legs, not been sitting down enough. But change that now, now that it's planting out time. So at the moment, they're in these, these are my old, really rubbishy plastic cells which are falling apart. These are the ones I've been replacing with the um, container-wise ones, the really strong ones. And quite simply, <laughs> these ones are a fiddle. Do you know what? <laughs> oh no, that's, well that's torn it. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see a thing. I'm going to show you now, sorry. Um, they've been falling apart for ages. As you can see, lovely little bit of root system. So, two plants per pole. And that gives me that number of, that 96, that lovely magic 96 I was talking about earlier. Now, um, what I've already done in, in the bed, obviously I've got the frame up. It, 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 look, doing the frames this old school way is much quicker than doing my bean arches over the paths it is much quicker but it still took ages because I've forgotten about the amount of knots you have to tie there's a knot at the top of each set of poles anyway that's done and then um, about half an hour or so ago what I've done is I've come along and soaked where I'm going to be planting again so if you remember right back to this morning which in your time is only a few minutes ago on the video but for me was about five hours ago the first thing I did um, today was to absolutely soak this bed and the other bean bed with probably the equivalent of about eight cans of water really soaked it left it for half an hour to soak in a bit so that I could then bash it down a bit so despite having you know that's a lot of water onto these beds um they were just completely dry again <laughs> so yeah got the poles up got the bed soaked again 
but not not the not all over not in the middle just just where i'm going to plant on the far side i have popped in seeds of cocoa sophie because the cocoa sophie that was one of the lot of seeds that they were all of them 100 percent demolished um so yeah i've direct seeded and i'll have to that's really loud this is a particularly noisy day today when I really, really like some peace and quiet. Anyway, so they're now directly seeded and the cocoa de pampole, the rock and core, which are bush beans, I've soaked those beds too, so that when I make the drills to reseed, the seed will be going into moist soil. And then before I go home today, everything will be getting another watering because it's just so hot and dry and what have you. Now in this bed, back to the reference about the slugs behind me, I've left the, the gutter along the edge quite deep and quite clear. I'm going to trickle um, slug pellets into that. I know they come over here, you know, in the evening. You can see them all marching across this path heading into my garden. So I thought if I put them in the gutter there and I'm going to sprinkle um, a row along his fence line. <sighs> so not. You know, it really does annoy me because it's... It's at my expense, isn't it? It's my expense of buying the pellets or my expense of losing my food. But never mind. So, yeah, get on with getting these in. Uh, like I said, this is just bog standard Scarlet Emperor runner beans. But I grow them for the bean, not the whole pod. Then I'm going to do six poles of that, so I'll have 12 plants. I've actually got 15 plants in the tray, so of course I'll save three. And when I come back tomorrow and they're all eaten, plant those three. I've got a feeling that's going to be the case. And then I'm going to have some Bolotti, some Helda. They're all going to be plants, seeds that side. Over there, um, I'll show you when I've done. Uh, I think probably for now, what I need to do is just... I can't get... A, these just don't ever ever buy these cheap plastic trays you can't push your plants out you're trying to get them out and they end up ripping they're absolutely rubbish a really really false economy if you look at them and think oh but they're so much cheaper than say you know the container wise ones they're cheaper for a reason they're rubbish oh dear never mind um yeah i will I'll get everything planted and then either show you what I've done or we'll do something else. Can someone pour me a nice cold, cold glass of lemonade? That would be nice. Yeah. Lemonade with ice cubes. Yum, yum. Wow, we. <laughs> Last drop is now positively warm. Yeah, it's warm. Good. No, I won't put it there because it'll look like an advert, won't it? So, I just checked my clock. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I got here at ten. Six hours. You know what? I'm amazed and pleased at that because that's definitely, yeah, by far the longest session I've managed in the garden this year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm especially pleased because... Um, you know, I am, I am getting real kind of oh, moments following on from COVID. Yesterday was one of those I could just I couldn't wake up. But um, yeah, I'm chuffed, 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 chuffed. We've got loads of this is all the garlic. It's bone dry. I can get the foliage off. Not a priority. So I'm really delighted because you know I got here this morning. The first thing I did was water the whole garden. Just water everything. God, it's so dry. Absolutely, well, bone dry. I know we all use that expression, don't we? Bone dry. It's dust dry. So I soaked the whole garden this morning and then took a bit more time to, hey, Rosie Posy, to soak the two bean beds. 
ahead of me bashing them and getting them prepped for taking the beans. So that was a really good job done, first thing. And it took me all of that and the two bean beds, which got soaked twice, it just took over an hour, I think, in the end. Um, obviously, then I've put my bean frames up. I don't know how long that took, two, three hours. Oh, it seems to take forever. But they're done, yay. And uh, once the frames were up, I've then soaked those beds again in order to, oh, she's rolling on her back, in order to receive seed and my plants that have survived. And I've also completely reseeded. I did that video three weeks ago called Sewing Protein. Was it three weeks ago? Getting off of four weeks ago. I did that video four weeks ago. I've essentially done that whole day's effort again today for the chickpeas. So that's all of the cocoa de pampol have been re-sown. All the rock and core have been re-sown. Half, if not more, actually more than half of the climbing beans have been re-sown. Uh, and now I'm going to water the garden again. <laughs> So it's going to take another hour. Not the bean beds, they've had two lots today, but everywhere else in, in that space of time since sort of 10 this morning, in these six hours, dust dry again. So I'm going to give everything a really, really good soak. I'll stand over each plant for ages with the can. Give it all a good soak. Get myself home. <laughs> um, do nothing, flop. And then come back tomorrow because tomorrow is... Squash day, so planting squash. Um, it's going to be quite physical because there's a lot of stuff to move around and what have you, but never mind tomorrow. Actually, let's not think about tomorrow. Let's just be in today. I am so happy that there is a bit of structure in the garden by way of the frames and a few plants in my soil. I could cry. <laughs> and all that sowing that I did a few weeks ago, I've done it all again and yeah it's a pain in the backside having to do that again but by doing it again i give myself a chance of a harvest you know what that's what it's all about and giving myself half a chance let's see all right my lovelies i will see you again actually it will be really soon it's probably gonna um the videos might come thick and fast for a few days because there's so much to catch up on out here so until the next one please take care of yourselves <laughs> Rosie's curled up next to me. Her purr isn't as loud as Poppy's or Rusty's, so I don't think you'll pick it up. But yeah, I'm going to have a little cuddle here with Miss Rosie. And yeah, 10, 15 minute cuddle. And then I'm going to get back out and get everything watered. Get myself home, get myself watered. And do it all again tomorrow. See you then. Cheerio, everyone. <laughs>